In alhamdulillah, wa salam, wa salam Allah, wa rasul Allah. Welcome to another session here at Sunnah Followers. This is our Tawheed class. And our topic for the next couple of weeks will be, who are the jinn? Who are the jinn? And are they our friends? Or are they our foe? This is a question that a lot of Muslims ask all the time. Well, we're going to cover the jinn in detail. We're going to speak about exactly what they are, how they are created. We're going to also discuss what their purpose is. We're going to answer the question, are they friends or foes? And we're going to answer the question about since they're, if they are Muslim jinn and how should we react with them? All of that will be covered in this series. And also we're gonna cover how to protect yourself from them. So I want everyone uh, to please share this on your Facebook timeline because there's a lot of Muslims out there who do ask us about the jinn. There are a lot of Muslims out there who are confused as to whether they are friend or foe. There's a lot of Muslims out there who I know make dua calling upon the jinn. You know, we're gonna cover all of that. So please guys, look at all the blessings you will get for sharing Islam in its truthfulness based on the Quran and the authentic hadiths with the understanding of the companions on your timelines. So please guys, I know a lot of you are here in the Zoom room. For those of you who are here in the Zoom room, it would be great if you could just log on to Facebook just to uh, take to share my live session to your timeline and then come on back in the Zoom. And again, you don't want to click on watch party. Remember, Muslims don't party. Instead, we share. Because when you share that way, uh, if there's anybody on your timeline who happens to take interest in what I am speaking about, you know, if they want to ask a question or put a comment, I can see what they ask. I can see what they type if you share. But if you don't share, I won't be able to see anything. I won't be able to interact. So again, please share this to your timeline. Just like you guys like to share the men out there who talk about things, try sharing this woman named Layla Nasheba because I think I can shake your heart a little bit better than they can, you know, subhanAllah. Okay, so anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. And I hope you guys like my special effects. I try to keep it real for you as Sooner followers. I try to maybe be, be of interest. You know, I want you guys uh, to not get bored with me. And as you can see, you know, my background is smoke. Why do you think it's that? Because this is what the gens are created from, smokeless, smokeless flames of fire. No one can create a smokeless flame but Allah, but I can create or make it smoke. So I put the little smoke background here to try to put you in the mood, to try to set the theme, to try to set the mood, to try to stir you up to get your interest about this topic. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. And as always, for those of you on um, um, Zoom, I did share the link to the PowerPoint. I don't use any books. A lot of people ask me, Sister Layla, I have a lot. In fact, I have a new sister here who wanted to know what books should she buy for my classes. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I don't use any books uh, what, other than the Hadiths and the Quran. So, but what I do have is PowerPoint. I've been teaching the same things for over uh, since 1988 on the internet and everything is in PowerPoint. And a lot of times I forget, you know, to give you the links, no one thinks to ask, but for those of you in the Zoom room, there's the link. I want you guys to copy that link there because that is the link to all the PowerPoint for this series. So that way you can refer back to it. All the Hadiths are there. Everything is right there. So please, everyone here on, on uh, the Zoom room, copy that link and share it too to your timeline so that people have access to it. And for those of you on Facebook, uh, if there's anyone here that's in the Zoom room that's logged in on Facebook, please share the link with them. 
because I can't copy and share because I'm not on Facebook except with my phone. And I don't know how to, I'm not on the phone in the Zoom. So whoever's here that's in the Zoom room and is also logged in on Facebook, it would be greatly, there you go. Thank you for Team of Velez. So that way people have it. That's the link. That is the link to all the PowerPoints of this series. If you click on it, it'll open up all the PowerPoint. Today's is PowerPoint number one, Gen number one. So you can refer to that, okay? And again, uh, for the people uh, here on Zoom, you know, who uh, remind me to also share it, you know, in fact, those of you on Zoom can share it occasionally because there's gonna be people joining. Uh, Alhamdulillah is usually 50 people in here. So just share it every few seconds so that people can see if, in case I forget. If someone just maybe um, Fame or someone or Melion, just every few so many uh, uh, minutes, share the link. So whoever new joins can have it, okay? All right. Okay, with that said, let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen so we can learn about one of the most controversial and most interesting topics of Islam, which is the jinn and their world. So let's put it up here. Uh, give me a second to set my uh, screen. I do have the PowerPoint, there it is. I was prepared today. I got up early, uh, thanks to Gracie. Gracie woke me up at one o'clock. I didn't wake up at three today. I woke up at one, that's early. So I did prepare. Okay, here we go. Inshallah, everyone should be able to see my PowerPoint. And again, this is the world of the jinn. Today's lecture will serve as an introduction into what we will be speaking about for the next two weeks. First of all, just like the angels, the jinn are part of the unseen world. What does that mean? That means that we cannot see them. But despite the fact that we cannot see them, they can see us. And that is what makes them so dangerous. They can see the angels, okay? Because the angels are part of the unseen world too, okay? They can see what the unseen world, whereas we cannot. But even though we cannot see them in their original form, they do indeed exist. And just as, as we are required to believe every single thing that Allah has told us about the angels, despite being able to see them, we're supposed to believe every single thing that Allah has told us about the jinn. And one thing, and I want everyone to understand this, there is one thing that the jinn share in common with us, and that is that they two were given free will. Does everyone understand that? The jinn two were given free will. I repeat, the jinn two were given free will. What does that mean? That means that they will be held accountable on the day of judgment, just as we will. That means that unlike the angels, they think for themselves. They share that in common with us. They have the choice to either obey a law or disobey them. So even though we cannot see them in this world, we will see them on the day of judgment. In fact, when we stand before a law to be judged, the jinn will be standing right next to us but we won't care about how they look because we'll be so petrified as to whether or not we're gonna end up in smoke, okay? And if for those of us who are given the good news of paradise, not only will we live in paradise and enjoy the delights, but the jinn will live right there with us as neighbors side by side because their purpose is the same as ours. Remember, everything that Allah created has a purpose. 
The angels have a purpose. The sun has a purpose. The moon, the stars, the mountains have a purpose. The animals have a purpose. The insects have a purpose. We humans have a purpose and so do the jinn. What is their purpose? Again, they were created with the same purpose as we were. And that is to worship Allah alone. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, I, Allah, created not the jinns and humans except for them to worship me alone. So there's the evidence. There is the Dalil that the jinn have the same purpose as we have. And a lot of Muslims will ask that, Sister Layla, what purpose do the jinn have? Well, their purpose is to worship Allah, just like ours. Also, Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, O oh, gathering of jinns and mankind, did there not come to you messengers from amongst yourselves reciting to you my verses. That verse of the Quran right there is the Dalil. It is the clear proof of two things. Number one, every prophet that Allah sent to the humans, that prophet was also sent to the jinn. Not only did the prophets come to us and remind us and rehearse to us the words of Allah and of what our purpose is, but they also went to the to the jinn and, and reminded and rehearsed it to them too. And that verse is also the Dalil, the evidence that they will be judged and that they are held accountable for their choices in life, just as we are. So Allah sent the prophets, not just to remind us and teach us, but to teach the jinn as well. And again, the jinn live amongst us, but we cannot see them. But they can see us. And this is very important because the simple fact that they can see us and we can't see them means that they can hurt us. So Allah has commanded them to stay away from us, okay? And this is why I tell you guys, don't worry about the good jinn. You won't ever come in contact with a good jinn because if a jinn is good, that means he obeys Allah or she obeys a law. And if they obey a law, that means that they are not only uh, beings that pray and fast, but they stay away from you. So if there's any jinn hanging around you or communicating to you or interacting with you, they're evil. The good jinns obey a law. So don't worry about them. Don't even you know think about them because they're obeying a law. But even though we cannot see them, they see us and they can harm us. So this is why Allah has told them to stay away from us and they live here on earth with us in their own separate communities, in their own separate communities, okay? And also, not only do they share this earth with us, not only are they required to work here on earth to earn good deeds for paradise, but they were all there, they differ from us in their creation. Again, Allah says in the Quran and in the interpretation, the meaning, and the jinn we created aforetime from the smokeless flames of fire. Now, let me explain what aforetime means. This is old English. We don't use that today. Aforetime, I used to go to college. We don't speak that way. Aforetime means before. So what do you learn from that verse? You learn from that verse that the jinn were created before us. 
Write it down, it's gonna be on the quiz. Who did a law create first, humans or gin? The answer is he created the gin before or us. And that verse right there of the Quran is the Dalil, the jinn. We created a four time. That means before you from the smokeless flames of fire. And just so you guys know, when Allah created the jinn, they lived here on earth too, before us. Remember, it was always the intention of Allah for mankind and jinn to live on earth and work for paradise. Paradise represents Allah's reward for the good things you've done. Allah allowed shaitan and Allah allowed Adam to live in paradise, but it was not his ultimate uh, uh, intentions. His intentions were for both of them and their species to earn paradise. Okay, so the jinn used to live here on earth before Allah even created Adam. Before Allah even created Adam, the jinn lived here, but they caused so much destruction. They were busy killing each other, fighting each other. So that's when Allah said, I'm gonna create another being another creation and that's when he created adam but just we'll talk about that in another episode of this but for now what i want you guys to remember is they were created before us and they were created from smokeless flames of fire okay and there's the evidence to that and also the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us he said the angels were created from light, the jinn were created from fire, and Adam was created from that which Allah has already described for us, from dirt. So all three creations were from different sources, okay? So that brings us to the question that many Muslims ask, when were they exactly created? Well, we already said they were created before us. Also, a law tells us we created man of dirt, of clay, and of altered dark mud. But the jinn we created before them from a flameless fire. So again, I want y'all to remember that. That's the Dalio. If some Muslim comes to you, wanting to argue and tell you that we were created before the jinn, you have the proof from the Quran. But as far as what was the exact date, no one can tell you that. Even though you can come upon different uh, opinions where the early scholars argued and said a thousand years before mankind. But again, whatever they say, you know, like the prophet said, if you can't prove it, leave it alone. Whatever is doubtful, stay away from it. So it's not even important how long before uh, uh, us were they created. The bottom line is they were created before us, okay? And also when we talk about the jinn, there are different names given to them. There's different names given to them. For example, if a person is speaking of the jinn purely of themselves, they are called jinni. 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 That's the word used for just a, a jinn in and of itself. Jinni. And that's where all those uh, fantasies. Aladdin and the genie, genie. We call them genie in English. Now do y'all see where genie comes from? You rub the pot, out comes the genie. That's referring to a jinn in and of itself. They, that's the Arabic term given to them. They're genie or a genie as you hear us say in English now, okay? Also, if a person is mentioning the jinn that live amongst us, they are called Ammar, Ammar, Ammar. 
Those are the jinn that live amongst us. You know, we cannot see them. You know, they live in their own communities. We're going to talk about where they live and their communities and what they do in them. But they're called Ammar. Those are the jinn that live amongst us. Ammar. Ammar. They live amongst us, but separate. You know, off in the woods. They live in the woods. Okay. They live in the outhouses, not your bathroom. The jinn don't live in your bathroom unless you got a nasty house. But they do live in outhouses. Those are Ammar. That's the gym we seek protection from when you are traveling and you go outside to the outhouse or you go off to the woods. Those are Ammar. Those are the gins that live amongst us, but in their own uh, uh, separate places. And when we're speaking about young gin, they are called Arwa. 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 These are the young gin. And when we're mentioning the evil ones, you guys know the name for the evil ones. They are the shayateen or shaitan. What is the Arabic term shaitan? When we're talking about evil jinn, we're talking about devils in English. Shaitan is devil in English. Shayateen are devils, plural. Hey, baby! Okay. They are shayateen or shayateen for devils. That's the ones that are bad. Those are the ones that are evil. Those are the ones that try to destroy your marriage. Those are the ones. And by the way, those are the ones that are locked up during Ramadan. Ramadan, Allah locks up the most dangerous and the most evil of the jinn. Those are the ones that are locked up. Okay, and also the most even more harmful ones are called a threat. These are the strongest ones. The strongest jinn are called a threat. Remember when King Solomon, we did the story of Solomon during my open forum, and I gave you guys the story of Solomon. When Solomon wanted the jinn to bring him the throne of Bilqis, it was an Afrit that did it. They're the strongest, the most powerful of the jinn. So as you can see, there's different types of jinn, different names ascribed to them, just as there's different names ascribed, you know, to other create creations of Allah, okay? And when we talk about the different types, there's one type of jinn that can take the form of a dog or a snake or an ugly man, or an ugly creature. Again, just like the angels, we cannot see the jinn in their original form, okay? But they can take the form of a dog, a rat, a crow, an old man, an old woman, and they can come to you and try to stir up problems. And remember, we talked about how Shaitan himself, Iblis himself, he took the form of a man and uh, during when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions were fighting against the Quraysh, he took on the appearance as an old, of an old man and went to the Quraysh and told them, oh, you're gonna be victorious. You're gonna destroy this Muhammad and his followers. And he led them out there on the battlefield. And then when he saw the, uh, that Allah has sent the angels, the angels took on the form of handsome men and came down to fight beside the Muslims. When Iblis saw uh, a Jibril coming at him, he, he ran away and disappeared. And the, and the Quraysh like, what happened to the man that was uh, uh, giving us all this uh, encouragement? Yeah, well, he ran away when he saw that the law sent the angels in disguise as handsome men to fight. So the jinn, even though we cannot see them in their original form, they can take on different forms, such as an ugly animal, a dog, a snake, a, a, a cockroach, even, even a cockroach, a rat, ugly things. That's one type of jinn, the kind that can transform. And then there's another type of jinn 
These are the jinn that have wings and they fly. They fly through the sky. You know how you travel to some places in Europe and you see those gremlins on top of buildings with wings? They're supposed to be guarding the city. Paris has a lot of them. The city of Paris on top of their buildings, these gremlins with wings, supposed to be guarding them, okay? Where do you think they get that from? The jinn, <laughs> the jinn can't guard them from nothing. But there are some jinn that have wings and they can fly. We can't see them. They fly through the, the night all the time. A lot of times, remember you find yourself walking and say you go for a walk, you know, it's after my grib and it's a beautiful summer night and you and your husband decide to go strolling through the woods. And as you're strolling through the woods, you feel something fly past you. But you say, was that a bird? You look around, you can't find it. Or you will hear wings above you, but there is no bird. Those are the gin. The gin live in the woods and they're probably flying, trying to get you away from, you know, their home because maybe they got some little babies walking around. They afraid you're going to step on them. So a lot of times at nighttime, when you're walking through the woods or you're walking through the forest, you're walking through that uh, a graveyard. A lot of people will try to cut through a graveyard and they say, God, I felt like it wings must be a bat, but I didn't see any bats. Or it could have been a gin disguised as a bat trying to get you out of there because that's where they live. So that's another type of gin. You know, we got the gins that can transform and then we have the gins that can fly. And then there's a third type of gin. These are the gins that can run real fast. They travel and they run and stop. They run and stop. They're real fast. Okay. So those are the three different types. And where's my evidence? Where's my evidence? Where's my evidence? Where's the evidence to what I say? Because remember, whatever I teach, whatever I say, I give you the proof. And that's how I want you all to be. Whenever you hear people make comments about Islam, if they don't back it up with clear evidence, and that's how you know that's a person that ain't worth listening to. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the jinn are of three types. There's one type that has wings and they fly through the sky. There's another type that looks like a snake or a doll. And there's another type that travels and stops and resumes its journey. So there's the evidence. And again, everything I teach you, everything that I'm going to be teaching you about the jinn, I have evidence. A lot of people ask me all the time, Sister Layla, how do you know? There's so many speakers today. How do we know who's telling the truth, who to listen to? Listen to them. Do they give you clear evidence? And is there evidence from the Quran? Is there evidence from the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or is there evidence from some Imam? That's what you listen for. My evidence is always from the prophet or the Quran. And if there is something that needs to be explained more, I give you the companion's explanation, not some imam or some mufti or some Islam Q&A, okay? So here's the proof of everything that I taught you, this authentic hadith, okay? So remember that there are three different types of jinn. One type can transform into an ugly animal or an ugly human being. By the way, a lot of you can say how uh, you see ghosts. Ghosts are jinn. Those are the kind that can transform. They transform. They love to take on the appearance of a dead relative. They look at a picture of one of your dead relatives and they can transform into that and come to you and haunt you at night. They love to do that. Oh, the gin get a crack out of it. They, the, oh, that's one of their fa favorite pastimes. Coming to you in the appearance of a dead relative. Okay, so they, those are the ones that you experience when you experience that. Those are the ones that can transform. Okay. 
All right, and there's the evidence. Wait a minute, hold on, skip my page. So thus guys, we learned so far that the jinn are a creation of Allah. We learned that Allah created them with a purpose just as he did everything else. Their purpose is to worship him alone. Also, the jinn have free will. And since they have free will, they are intelligent beings. They are beings with understanding. Okay, they are not germs. They are not aliens. They are not accidents. They are real entities, real beings that do exist. And they are held accountable for their actions. They are held accountable for their behavior, their choices, just as we are, okay? We have a hadith, whereas the prophet, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you hear the barking of dogs or the braying of donkeys in the middle of the night, seek refuge in Allah from shaitan because they see what you do not see. A lot of people will come to me and they ask the question, Sister Layla, can animals see the jinn? The answer is yes, and there's your evidence. You know how at nighttime, especially when the sun sets, how many of you experience this, especially when the sun sets? Every night at my grill, you hear dogs just start barking. Birds start chirping. Your cats may start twirling around, looking out the window, scratching. They see the evil gin because the evil gin come out at night like vampires. The evil jinn, the afrites, the most dangerous ones, the shayateen and the afrites, they come out at nighttime when the sun sets. That's why the prophet said, lock your doors and cover up your food at my grib because the evil jinn come out. And then after uh, my grib is over, you can un open your doors and stuff. So the dogs see that. That's why they start barking at my grib every day, howling. And then during the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at night, you say, what is that dog barking at? A dog just sh won't shut up. Or donkey star brain. It's because they see the gin. The gin, they see the gin walking around. Or why is your cat, like my cat, he'll stay in the, my cats will stay in the window sometimes at night, just looking. So I'm thinking that they see a, a man or something, so I'll turn on my patio light. And it's nothing there, but they see, they probably see the jinn walking all around out there. Okay. So that hadith is the evidence of that, you know, that yes, the animals can see them. Okay. They can see them. And that's why they bark and act like they do. And that brings us to another question that many Muslims ask. What type of role do the jinns play with us? Okay, well, we talked about how each and every one of us, each and every one of us, each and every one of us as a human being has a gen assigned to us. That gen lives in your heart. Do everybody understand that? We cannot see that gen, but that gen is attached to us by a law when we reach the age of puberty. Whether the jinn is male or female, only Allah knows best because there are male jinns and there are female jinns. And we'll talk about that in another class, okay? But we all have a jinn assigned to us. He hoovers around in our heart when we are awake. And then when we go to sleep, he moves up to your nose. And he whispers, trying to get you to miss your prayers and all of that. Okay, so, and that jinn is not your friend. Allah put him there to be a test for you. He's your enemy. And then you will find some Muslims out there. I remember about 15 years ago when I was teaching this exact class, 
a brother came here and tried to argue with me. He said, yeah, well, my gen is Muslim. I spend every day of my life trying to convert my gen to Islam. And I think I've converted him, a stock fill off. You cannot convert your gen to Islam. This is ignorance. Allah put him there to be your test. He put him there to whisper, to try to get you to disobey him. Well, this man said, well, the prophet Muhammad converted his jinn. Well, because he was a prophet and he didn't convert him. Allah cleansed his heart, just like he cleansed every prophet's heart. Their jinns were made Muslim so that their jinns could not harm them. That's why they are prophets of Allah, but that's not for you or me. That jinn that Allah has assigned to us is evil and he will stay with us. He's a shayat, he's one of the shayateen. That's the type of jinn that's assigned to us. It's one of the shayateen. And he will stay with us until we die. And if you end up in and uh, end up in the hellfire, he will be our companion in the hellfire. He's evil. He's not a Muslim. He's not good. Where's my evidence? Well, listen to what the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, there is not one of you who does not have a jinn appointed to be your constant companion. And when he said this, one of the companions asked, what about you? He said, I have a gene, a gene appointed to me too, but he helps me and he is Muslim. So he only helps me to do good. Okay, but then he goes on to say in that hadith that he's a prophet. This is only for the prophets of Allah. Okay, so there will be no more prophets after the prophet Muhammad. So any jinn assigned to any of us is evil. He's a shaitan, he's a devil. And Allah put him there and his purpose is to try to seduce us, to disobey Allah and join him in the hellfire, okay? All right, so that brings us to the question that many ask, well, what about shaitan? We talk about jinn. What about shaitan? Well, I want you guys to know that shaitan is from the world of the jinn. He used to worship Allah in, the, in, in paradise with the angels. Why? Because that's what Allah chose him to do. Allah allowed him to live amongst the angels. But when he disobeyed Allah by refusing to prostrate to Adam, that's when Allah cast him out of um, paradise, okay? So shaitan is one of the jinn, and just like the jinn, he too has a free ch choice. He has a mind. He has the ability to understand and all of that. And he too will be held accountable and is held accountable. And I want you guys to understand Shaitan, Iblis, he is not a fallen angel. Because again, this is what the Christians teach. And unfortunately, there are some Muslims out there who believe he's an, a fallen angel. Well, listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning. Remember when we said to the angels to fall down and prostrate before Adam, and they all did except Iblis. He was of the jinn, so he rebelled against his Lord's command. So that verse, that one verse of the Quran is all you need as a Muslim to refute the misguided Muslims who think that Shaitan is, or Iblis is a fallen angel. No, he is one of the jinn. Does everybody understand that? That is the verse of the Quran that you do not ever 
want to forget. Okay. So not only are there different types of jinn, but they have different powers. Allah has given the jinn powers that he did not give to us. Allah has told us about some of their powers, such as the ability to travel, the ability to fly, the ability to transform. And remember the Ifrit or the most strongest of the jinn, you know, he was the one that brought uh, the, 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 the throne of, of Sheba, of Bilkis to Solomon. And Allah mentions that in the Quran, when he says in the interpretation, the meaning an Ifrit from amongst the jinn said, I will bring her throne to you before you stand from your place. And indeed I am strong and trustworthy. Okay, so that verse of the Quran is the proof, you know, that it was the Ifrit uh, that brought the thrones, which shows uh, more of their powers. And that brings us to another question. Well, do they eat? Do they drink? Remember, the angels do not eat. The angels do not drink. What about the jinn? Well, this is something else that the jinn share in common with us. They do eat, they do drink. And not only that, but they make babies too. There's female gin and there are male gin. Listen to what the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, someone from amongst the jinn called upon me. So I went with him and recited the Quran for them. He then took me and showed me the traces of where they had been and the traces of their campfires. They asked him for food and he said, you can have every bone on which the name of Allah has been mentioned that comes into your possession as meat. You can also eat the droppings of, uh, uh, as food for your animals. So the prophet said, do not use these things to clean yourself because they are the food and provisions of your brothers, the believers amongst the jinn. So that hadith there is the proof that the jinn do eat, the jinn do drink. And this is why we cannot use dung to clean ourselves, dry dung to clean ourselves with because they eat that and all of that. And the, uh, you know, the droppings of, of our horses and, and, uh, and, and, and animals, they eat that. So yes, the jinn do eat. In fact, they eat with their left hand. This is why we cannot use ours. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if any one of you eat, he should eat using his right hand. And if you drink, drink with your right hand because shaitan eats with his left and drinks with his left. So again, guys, this is one of the reasons why we can't use our left hand to eat with. Because again, the uh, law wants us to do the opposite of what the jinn do. The jinn lay on their stomach. That's why we cannot lay on our stomach when we sleep. The jinn use their left hand. That's why we use the right. So, and that's also proof that they eat as well. More proof that they too indeed eat, okay? And again, where's my proof? Where's my proof? Where's my proof that the jinn um, have babies and they procreate and get married? Well, Allah tells us in the Quran and in the interpretation of the meaning therein are most of modest gays whom neither man nor jinn will touch before them. Here in this verse of the Quran, Allah is speaking about one of the rewards of paradise for the men of this world. For those men of this world that make it to paradise, one of the rewards they will have are the El Hurin. And not just man, but also the jinn. For those jinn who live their lives practicing Islam and who died upon that, they too will have wives from amongst the El Hurin. So that is the proof 
that the genes do marry, that the genes do procreate, that the genes do make babies. And that brings us to the last question that many, many Muslims ask. Do the jinn live forever? Are they immortal? The answer is they are not immortal, that they do die. Remember, Allah himself tells us in the interpretation of the meaning, everyone will pass away. There remains but the countenance of your Lord. So yes, the jinn do die. However, this is another difference they have over us. They live longer lives than us, okay? So the average lifespan may be 70 years, let's say for a human. Allah may allow the jinn to live 120 years. So they live longer than us, but they do die. So a lot of people ask, and why is it that shaitan has not died. Well, Allah has given him respite. When Allah uh, kicked him out of paradise and damned him to the hellfire forever, Shaitan asked him, he said, oh Allah, give me respite. Let me live until the day of judgment. And I promise you, I will take to the hellfire as many of these humans as I can, okay? So Allah gave him that respite. So, but he will die too on the day of judgment. Listen to what the prophet said. He used to say, I seek refuge by your glory, Allah, whom there is no other God but you. You are the one who does not die, but the jinn and mankind do die. Concerning the length of their lives, we do not know much except what Allah has said, you know, he's given shaitan respite until the day of judgment. So thus guys, the jinn do die, but their lifespan may be longer than us. So this serves as just a brief introduction into what we will be, be discussing for the next two weeks. We're gonna go into detail about the jinn we're going to go into detail about their purpose. We're going to speak about how they're constantly duping us as Muslims and humans. And we're going to speak about how we can protect ourselves from them. So we'll stop right here for today. And again, I did give the link to the PowerPoint. The link to the PowerPoint of this series is typed there on the uh, Zoom room. And also if somebody can, uh, and it's also typed there on the Facebook um, uh, 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 thread too. Bookmark that link because that's where you're gonna find all the PowerPoints that I'm using for this series. So that way you guys will be able to inshallah do well on the quizzes and also refer back uh, to the PowerPoint uh, about the gen. So we'll stop right here. If there's any questions or comments, you can type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfirullah.